This channel is supported by Truefire. Truefire is an online library of lessons from some of my favorite players. There's thousands of lessons on there. You can use the promo code JNC40 to get 40% off of any of their courses. As a non-guitar snob, I wanted to kind of put together a video kind of around some of the guitars under a thousand pounds that I stink, stink, think uh, remain a really good choice. Uh, you've probably seen my top kind of three choices in the introduction there. Um, so first of all, let's start off with Sire. Um, so I don't have an affiliation with any of these brands, although I have been sent guitars by Sire in the past. My overall impression with most Sire guitars is that they play fantastically well, the specs are really good, the neck shapes, the frets and that sort of stuff and the electronics are generally what I'm after. The two downsides as I see with them in general is that the nuts are kind of, well they give away that they're slightly cheaper guitars I would say because they're kind of a bit of a boxy cut, sometimes quite high. Um, and sometimes some of the finishing elements, so like the binding might have some kind of pitting marks in it or, you know, just not perfect craftsmanship, should we say. But I guess at this price point, you're not necessarily expecting it. It's not like it's a, a Gibson or anything like that. It's kind of a budget guitar that plays really nicely. I think the L7 for me stands out as being one of the nicer things in the Sire range in general, particularly because it's kind of like a nice take on a Les Paul. Um, really nice upper fret access, plays good, sounds good, all of those good things. So that makes it into my top guitars under a thousand. Basically the inspiration for this video, by the way, Cyanic Audio has uh, a video, uh, kind of the best amps in certain price ranges. And I thought it was kind of helpful to get the perspective of some people on this sort of stuff. So Sires make it in there. I think Squire Classic Vibes 
are a good beginner's choice as well, the Sire stuff as well. And of course, Yamaha Pacificas. Talking of Yamaha, something that I don't have the version that would be under £1,000, but the Yamaha Revstar, the Indonesian made our standard series, I would suggest really belongs in here in terms of both playability specs, the only one out of any of these that is going to have stainless frets, and in terms of real quality work, build quality wise. The only downside on the Revstar stuff for me is that there's not a single coil option and I think the electronics don't necessarily work hugely well for me, like there's aspects in it that I don't love. Now, on the more expensive end of things within the top kind of guitars in this price range, this one doesn't actually quite make it in because this is £49 over a thousand, but the gold top version does. I thought probably like you think that this did seem like an expensive guitar on paper, um, you know, we're used to Indonesian guitars being kind of slightly cheaper. Um, so PRS sort of pushing the envelope of what SE really might mean. But the DGT SE did catch me by surprise. Really, really nice neck shape, nice and full in the hand. Playability is fantastic. Um, the, the frets are these vintage tool things, or tool, that uh, basically give it a really smooth, slinky feel. In terms of negatives, there aren't particularly any except for, well, I guess you'd have to check per guitar, but for me, this one, the trem stability is pretty good mostly, but if it does move slightly, it takes quite a long time to get it back in tune. Um, so that's just something to watch out for with, I guess, any floating trem. I tend to use it with the coil split up. Um, also, slight quirks of the DGT, given it is a custom instrument, this volume knob controls this pickup, this volume knob controls this pickup. So um, it does take some getting used to, and this switch for me feels slightly in the wrong place. But this feels and plays like a very expensive guitar, I'd suggest. Um, as good as any of my kind of Gibson guitars have been, as good as really any guitars that I've tried, um, I think it, it doesn't feel like a cheap guitar at all and doesn't have any obvious flaws so that's a nice thing and probably would be something that I'd recommend checking out if you're thinking of a guitar in this range it's also interesting as it's not really trying to be anything you know PRS is sort of between Gibson and Fender not actually copying either of them totally most of the time um, talking of copying Fender almost completely the Silver Sky SE, I think, is a pretty solid choice. I think now that there's some sort of parity in price range, I'd actually prefer the Silver Sky SE over the Mexican player. I think the specs are a bit closer to what I'd look for in terms of like a neck shape, as well as being really solidly built, the ones that I've tried. The main flaw that I found was that the saddles were sharp. Aside from that, they're pretty good, solid, built instruments at a decent price. I think you can pick them up still for about 600 pounds, the older colors. My last choice, which kind of does blend both the high quality build stuff as well as playability is FGN. Now FGN, I've done other videos on this, build guitars for Ibanez. So the Ibanez Prestige come out of this same factory. They're basically very, very, very well-made guitars. Um, some nice modern bits and pieces. The The downside for me, I guess, is kind of some unconventional looks and maybe the headstock, but it does combine both the fantastic playability and really decent workmanship, build quality, and uh, yeah, so the FGN, I think, is priced nicely sort of at the midpoint of this thousand pound range. Um, this is the only FGN I've played. Oh no, I played two FGNs. One was the S type with the humbucker in the bridge. That was really good too. And I, again, I think the, the build quality for me is like a step above Sire, up there with the PRS, maybe even beyond, you know, it's Japanese craftsmanship. It's uh, really top quality stuff. I think those are my choices, to be honest with you. Um, yeah, let me know if you've got any other suggestions. We don't need to go on with a, a way longer video, but I just 
wanted to do like a, a video about these things. There are individual videos reviewing all of these guitars, of course, which you can find if you want. I'll catch you in another video soon. I was using the Big Fender ES335 Clean and then the Eric Lead 2023 for Helix for, for these tones, if you're interested. Cheers.